Welcome to the last update on this cheap Chinese disk retainer shutter lock. In my two previous videos I showed you different methods of destructive entry and explained this lock to you. Now I wanna try to find out how they made this lock or this, this body here. That's part one of this video. And the second part is, well, <laughs> there was an idea from Pickbeard to cut the, the rod by using a um, drill and a hexer. So that will be the uh, final part of this video. You can uh, observe me trying this out. But now I want to discuss um, ideas about how this was actually made. So it looks like a solid block of metal with, with one cutout and some holes. And I think they either really had a solid block of uh, steel and cut out this portion here or they just casted it or cast it I don't know um, and then they uh, smoothed the, the surfaces with a, a mill for example but then we have some holes here so let's start with this hole or with this chamber it's pretty easy to drill it just through and then we have a, a hole or a chamber that goes only halfway and yeah, you can also easily do that and I think they just used a normal drill bit because the end is, is round as you can see so that's not a big mystery then we have one hole here that goes through the uh, top surface and extends a little bit underneath but this is also no big problem you can just drill it so it's, it stops here then we have a big chamber here for accepting the core also not a big problem to drill it and it's also round at the end then we have this slot for the uh, for the sidebar you can mill it out and we have um, and a large diameter also no big problem to, to mill it or to, to drill it. But now comes a um, more tricky portion because we have a chamber here as well. That's the chamber for accepting the metal balls and this chamber goes all the way through and you can see how it how it comes out here I hope you can see that. Yeah, I think so. So that's the end of this chamber here at the, at the very end. And there is no uh, visible mark here or there that they have drilled it through. But I think there's no other way that they have that they could have done it. So either by drilling it from the top or from the bottom. Um, yeah, we'll find out uh, just in a minute how they did it. And the second thing is that we have a little pin in here. Yeah, you can see the pin there. It sticks out and coming from no nowhere, looks like. And this pin is used for restricting the movement of the uh, of the core. So here's the here's the core. And when we slide it in like this, that's the that's the locked up, so that's the locked up position. We can turn it to the can turn it to the right, then it stops, and we can turn it back to the left, but not further. And I think, well, not I think, but I'm sure that this uh, is the job of this little pin to restrict the movement. So I think they drilled a hole in here and hammered the pin. And then with the coating made it uh, invisible. So let's start by punching uh, little uh, dents here on the top and on the bottom to find out how they drilled this uh, big chamber in in the in this uh, block of metal. I think they did it from the uh, from the bottom. So I have a, a center punch here.
also nothing. That's interesting. So I will go downstairs and file the surface coating away. So maybe then we can see how they did it, uh, from which side they drilled it in. And I will also file away uh, parts of here so that we can see how they put the pin inside. Just hold on. So a little filing has revealed the position of this pin here. Hope you can see the shadow. That's the pin that you can see when you look inside this big chamber here. And then on the bottom here we can see the shadow for the for the plug that closes the big chamber here that's usually filled up with the steel balls. Okay, I want to see if I can push this out and also can push out the pin and then I'll be back. So here the body, lock body is clamped in a vise and I have a metal ball just put on top of the plug. I used um, grease to glue it in place, so to speak, so that it doesn't slip away when I mounted it in the jaws. And now I can hopefully push it through. Let's see. Whoops. That was unexpected. Uh, oh, it's done. Look at that. So the plug is. <laughs> out of the lock. Cool. Alright, so the pin and the plug is out. We can see the location of the plug is, uh, at the bottom. That's the plug. And here is the, the pin. It was located here. Yeah, now it's completely, well, disassembled, so to speak. Interestingly, we can see that the coating or the plating is done in two layers. First layer is something of an orange color and then comes the shiny part on top of that. If anyone knows what that is, um, yeah, please let us know in the comment section. I will now show you again all the parts of this lock in a final picture and then you can uh, enjoy watching me trying to uh, cut through the bolt by using a drill. Alright, thanks for watching, happy picking and bye bye! Alright, so here is my setup. I have my corded drill mounted to the bolt. It spins. Uh, yes, <laughs> and here is my hacksaw with a fresh blade. It's a little bit awkward to hold this in one hand and put pressure with the saw. Uh, at the same time, but I will try my best, so let's see if this works. Okay, uh, what happened I think is that it became loose, uh, I don't know, I thought it would not spin anymore, so he recommended to use it on full power, so <laughs> um, I better put my uh, safety glasses on, let's give it another try, maybe I put my Food as a support. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So 
what happened now is that all the parts fell out. <laughs> um, let's see the damage that we caused on the bolt already. Ah, we can pull the bolt out. So that's everything. Uh, oops, that's everything the saw did to the bolt by now. The problem is I cannot really put uh, pressure on the bolt. Um, so well, let's see what can we do. I will um, reassemble the lock and then I will be back maybe with a better setup. Hold on. Okay, I clamped the bolt in the vise. I want to see if it's the fault fault of the blade. Um, now I can just try to cut it as usual. Okay, we are almost through. I don't want to go too far, um, but we can see that actually the pressure is the problem. So with a good support of the vise, we can see that it cut through quite easily and quite um, effortless. It's almost all the way through now. Um, yeah, but the problem with the uh, drill is that this uh, support um, is missing. So, <laughs> let me think about it. Alright, I want to give it a last try. I'm using now the table as a support because I don't want to use a vise. Uh, it's um, unrealistic to have a vise in the field <laughs> when you uh, want to cut open a lock. So, uh, yeah, let's try again. So it's not through, but we have reached a bit more uh, of diameter reduction. Uh, let's zoom in. Okay, almost through. That's quite exhausting. I have another uh, hexaw, big one. Let's see if we can put this in frame. So maybe. This one um, is better. Let's give it a try. Okay, finally. So, well, I have to say this is a method that does work in theory and also practically as you have seen. However, I don't think that this is actually a real world threat because yeah, it's quite cumbersome to hold the drill in one hand. So finally I used my foot to support it from um, getting angled. and. Yeah, maybe I'm not uh, <laughs> skilled in this kind of attack, but I think there are easier ways to get through the bolt. Anyway, it was fun to try. Thanks for watching, happy picking and bye bye.